Meet Veronica. She's a mother of two children, Peter and Patrick. Although they're siblings, and although they look much alike, Peter and Patrick are very different. Let's go back a bit. One year after Veronica started her career in pharmacy, she became pregnant with Peter. One year later, after she lost her job, she became pregnant with her second child, Patrick. During this difficult time, Veronica worried that her stress would negatively affect Patrick. She heard that stress during pregnancy can lead to low birth weight, increased risk of infection, and even premature birth. Luckily, both Peter and Patrick were born physically healthy and continue to lead healthy lives now that they are older. However, Veronica noticed drastic behavioral differences between them. For example, Patrick struggled with language development in his preschool years, whereas Peter achieved milestones in his language development with ease. As Patrick grew older, Veronica began to notice other behaviors. For example, Patrick has a tendency to become very anxious and to avoid confronting challenges. Additionally, Patrick tends to be very disagreeable and struggles to get along with others because of his bad temper. Veronica also notices that Patrick has trouble remembering things and that it seems to be negatively affecting his academic performance. These are all potential outcomes of stress during pregnancy, also known as prenatal stress. Other potential outcomes include increased risk of dyslexia, schizophrenia, autism, and depression. So could Veronica's stress account for these drastically different behavioral outcomes? And if so, how? When a pregnant woman is exposed to stress, glucocorticoid secretion from the adrenal glands increases. Glucocorticoids, or GCs, are hormones that can be transferred from the mother to the fetus via the placenta. Excessive amounts of GC can have adverse effects on brain development, including inhibition of the formation and maturation of the cells of the nervous system, the neurons. GCs can also increase activity in the fetus's central stress response system, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, better known as the HPA axis. This in turn can lead to a decreased number of GC receptors in the part of the brain known as the hippocampus. The hippocampus plays a vital role in inhibiting the HPA axis. Therefore, a decreased number of GC receptors means that a higher level of GC hormones is needed for HPA axis inhibition. As a result, the central stress response system becomes more active than it should be. Fortunately, it's not all bad news. Research has found that there are ways to combat the effects of prenatal stress before and after birth. For example, Cognitive Behavioral Group Therapy, or CBGT, has demonstrated benefits for pregnant women. In CBGT, mothers attend a series of six sessions that teaches them how to monitor negative thoughts they might have about themselves, others, and the world. They also learn how to distinguish between productive and unproductive thoughts, how to be more assertive, and how to facilitate behavioral change when experiencing anxiety-related behaviors. Cognitive behavioral therapy has also been tested on young children and shown equally positive outcomes. General postnatal care can make a drastic difference as well. Valley and colleagues studied two groups of rats that were both affected by prenatal stress. However, after birth, one group was accompanied by their mother, while the other was not. Researchers then observed how the two groups reacted to a stressful situation, a maze. The rats lacking a mother were highly anxious and wanted to escape the situation altogether, while the rats provided with postnatal care exhibited low anxiety and high exploratory behavior. With these findings in mind, pregnant mothers, and even affected children long after birth, such as young adults like Patrick, are still able to improve their outcomes.